All right, guys. Um, I was asked on YouTube to recreate this uh, menu bar here. Um, they are using JavaScript to do this. You can see as I move my mouse, that triangle jumps around. And uh, I think that I can do this with WebKit transitions in CSS3 instead of JavaScript, and only using JavaScript to uh, apply the class. So let's get started in this. This is the end result that we're going to make. Again, this is all using CSS3 transitions. Let's start with a fresh code palette. Now, this tutorial is going to be mostly CSS, okay? Just keep that in mind. So, here we go, fresh. So let's get started. So the first thing that we have to do is kind of, uh, well, we need our, our always HTML head head body body HTML okay and then the next thing we need is we're gonna need some jQuery okay so we're gonna need some jQuery in a minute and then we're gonna need some script tags and then we're gonna need some jQuery function on ready okay it's just a skeleton haven't done anything yet we're also gonna need some style type equals text slash oops text slash CSS slash style okay style type equals what don't you like why is my text editor weird okay that was weird my color was off if your color is off you should really take a look at it and make sure everything's right because yeah anyway so let's talk about the structure let's take a look at this again so we base this is basically a UL with LIs, okay? That's how most menus are done nowadays, ULs and LIs, right? So we've got one UL, and then we've got LIs in it. We're going to wrap the whole thing in a div just so that we have everything wrapped up in a package, okay? So we're going to start with that div, which we're going to give it a class equals moving underscore arrow. That's what we're going to call this whole thing. Again, this is just wrapping the whole thing up, okay? So we want a UL with LIs, right? So UL... LI and then each LI is going to have two things. They're going to have an image, okay, and they're going to have an A tag. Alright? So it's going to be image source equals blah 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 and then A href equals something and then uh, a name like home, okay. Close the LI and then close the UL. So that's the basic structure. So uh, we want to have so one, two, three, four, five, six. They've got six items. Okay, so we're going to have six items as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So home, and then let's say apps. What else do they have? Blog about us support. So blog about us support, and then contact. Okay, and if we look at what we've got so far awesome and that's that's what you want to see without CSS that is a correct navigation without CSS so the next thing that we need to do is um, do the arrow okay and well actually let's do the image let's before we go ahead of ourselves so the image um, they're using a couple different ones here and instead of getting a bunch of different ones, I'll just make this short, sweet, and simple and include one image that I already have here. It's a 16 by 16 Vimeo icon. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in icon.png. So let's pull the code up and say icon.png. Okay, and let's just make that all these guys. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so now we need to do the arrow. The arrow is going to be still within the div, okay, but outside the UL. Again, since we're outside the UL now, this is why we wrap the whole thing in a, in a bigger div, because we had more stuff going in it. So I am going to draw the arrow with SVG, okay, just to try something new. You could draw it with canvas, you could bring in an image. Any of those will fine. I'm going to use SVG, which at the time of this recording does not work in Safari, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> so to do SVG, we're going to open the div ID equals div ID equals arrow. Okay, so we have a div for our SVG arrow. Then we've got we need to open our SVG. So we say SVG 
xmlns, and we're going to type in the URL for the namespace, uh, colon, double slash, www.w3.org, slash 2000, and slash svg. And we type in your version number, which is 1.1, and we type in the width of our svg, which is going to be 12 pixels by height equals 7 pixels. 12 by 7 is the height of our SVG. Okay, so now we'll close our SVG. So, the way SVG works is you define the SVG main tag, give it a width and height, make sure you include the PX in there. So, a triangle is basically a, well, a tr there is no triangle in SVG, but you can use the polygon, right? So we're going to say polygon. Give it an ID, we're going to call it arrow thumb. And we're going to give it our points. So the way points in SVG work is you put it in quotes like that, okay? And you basically separate by space uh, the different points and comma for x and y. So it's going to go x comma y, x comma y, x comma y. And you only need three points for a triangle. So the first point needs to be at the very top. Actually, the, the first point needs to be, um, yeah, in the very top center which is 0, 0. Then the next point needs to be, so our, our guy is, again, 12 by, 12 by 7, right? 12 by 7. So the next point is going to be at uh, all the way to the right, so 6, 6, okay? So let me, <laughs> let me, just a second. See our arrow? See how there's a spot right here, top left, 0, 0, and then all, all the way to the right, okay? Well, if our whole thing is 12 pixels, this spot in the middle is 6 pixels, right? So we need to go x6, but all the way down, which is, again, 6. So so look at the arrow. So 0, 0, and then this spot right here is 6 to the right and 6 down. And then this guy is 12 to the right and 0 down, okay? So 6, 6, and then 12 to the right, and then 0 down, okay? Uh, cool polygon, and then we have to fill it, right? So you type in a fill, and you give it a color. Well, the color that I'm choosing for this is gray, so 333. Three, three. Again, I'm using a short hex code here. But that is how you draw SVG. So if we save this and refresh it, you can see we have our SVG arrow. Chill in there. Cool. So now we've got all of our HTML on the page. Now it's time to do the CSS. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through here real quick and put in the CSS that doesn't matter, the styling CSS. So that's going to be the body tag. You don't care about that, so I'm not going to explain it. The I'll go through the, well, so, yeah, so then the, the UL, well, here's how you center it right there and center it and place it. Here is how you place the UL. So margin, padding, border, height, width. I'm giving a, a WebKit and a yeah, I'm giving a WebKit gradient and a and a shadow. Again, I'm not explaining this stuff because it doesn't matter for the motion. Okay. So some more styling on that. Um, we want the image to be always floating left and to have a specific margin or a specific padding. Okay. And then, okay. So that's where we're gonna stop. Well, we're going to give the SVG its size in CSS. Now we need to pay attention. Okay. All that out of the way, let's actually do our transition. So, what we need to do is we need to style our arrow. Our arrow being the SVG div, which for you could be an image, it could be canvas, it could be SVG. Okay. So what we're going to do is first we're going to give it a width of 12 pixels. Again, that's our full width, 12 pixels. And then we're going to give it a margin left of 50 pixels just to start it off. We're just going to start off with 50 pixels left. Okay? And let's save that and refresh. Okay, so here's where we are right now. Where is my text for that? That looks terrible. Did I forget this block of text? I think I forgot this block of CSS. Uh, right after here. I didn't style the A tag. There we go. Okay. Again, you can read this more specifically if you want, but that's not what this tutorial is about. Anyway, so see 
this is just over. So what we're going to be animating is the margin left property. So let's take a look at this. If I click on this div and I start changing this margin left, you see the arrow moving? You see that? Isn't that cool? That's totally cool, isn't it? So this is the value that we're going to be changing, this margin left property. Okay. So that's where we need our transition. So what we're going to do is set up um, every possible position that the arrow can be in. So for example, let's go back to 50 pixels. Whoops. 50 pixels. So for home, we really want it to be right about here. So about 54 pixels. And then for apps, it should be about... Let's move our arrow, moving the arrow, about 150. That looks about good. Okay, so you're going to go through each of these and write down each of the positions of the margin left values and, and store them with classes. Okay, so for example, um, here are mine, right here. So home is 54, apps is 150. Blog is 233, about is 339, support is 457, and contact is 569. What's going to happen here is when you click on one of the elements, or when you mouse over one of these guys, I'm going to set the margin left to jump to that position. Okay, that's what's going on. I'm also going to add a little bit of styling for the polygon, just some shadowing. Okay, so that's that it's not going to change anything and nothing's happening so let's add the JavaScript now to actually change those we're going to basically going to add these classes okay currently in our HTML those classes don't exist on our arrow so the arrow doesn't do it but let's say our arrow had the class blog okay so arrow class equals blog let's say that was the case refresh see how the arrow is perfectly under blog okay and if I were to change the the class from blog to about see how it jumps to about okay and what it's doing and why it's doing that is I'm saying a, a element that has the ID of arrow and also has the class home set this value okay so now we've got that so let's actually do this on mouse over so we're basically gonna select our dot moving arrow so our main div and then the UL inside of that and then the LI inside of that and then the A inside of that Okay, the A tags are what we're going to mouse over. So we're going to say mouse over, and that's going to be a function. So when you mouse over one of the A tags, we're going to grab that arrow, okay, and we're going to first remove whatever class is there. There's currently no other classes on the arrow, okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. So there's currently no other classes on the arrow, so we're just going to remove them all first. So remove ATTR class, just going to remove class altogether. And then we're going to add the class okay and we're gonna get the class that it actually has okay and let me uh, so I actually skipped a step but we're gonna add so let me before I continue this JavaScript because this is wrong for a quick second I actually need to add some way to uh, to link these guys to their uh, classes so I'm actually gonna give each a tag a class so this is gonna be class equals home this is gonna be class equals apps this is going to be class equals blog this is going to be class equals about this is going to be class equals support and this is going to be class equals contact contact so now when you hover over an a the val the we can get the class that we want by saying this dot attribute class this is going to return us whatever class is currently on the element. This won't work if you have more than one class. For this example, I only have one class, so this works perfectly. So I'm going to say var, and I can't, I can't say var class because class is a, a, a word used in JavaScript. So I'll just say var a class equals that, and then when you click on, oops, when you click on one of these we'll say arrow remove class remove attribute class and then add class a class so what's gonna happen is when you hover over an a tag it's gonna go oh you're hovering over class equals apps let's set arrow to have that same class okay 
save and refresh. So now if we click now, see when I'm hovering, how the arrow is jumping along. So now, with just a, a tad bit of JavaScript, the arrow is switching positions based on these elements. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So the only other step, and because we're using JavaScript, I'm sorry, because we're using CSS to position it, and CSS classes, the only thing we have to do is add a WebKit transition, and that will make it smooth motion instead of jumping. So we only have one line left to do, and that's going to be on the arrow. We're just going to say dash WebKit, dash transition, transition, and what do we want to transition? We're going to transition margin left. We're going to transfer it over a time period of, let's say, 400 milliseconds. Okay? And we're going to give it a easing. We could say linear. We're going to say ease out. Okay? We're going to give it a. So this is the only line that you need to do the animation. Save and refresh. And now uh, the you're letting the CSS3 transitions handle all the animation for you. So there's no intervals, there's no animate in jQuery, there's none of that. It's just a very simple animation based on CSS. And this is the only line that did all that work. And again, the way it was set up is that I set up the classes and I'm using JavaScript to switch between the classes. And then I'm just letting CSS do the transition for me. Okay? So that's how you do a animated menu that does exactly what this does, only mine uses CSS3, theirs uses pure JavaScript.